Welcome back, everybody. We are so lucky to be here with Nathan Lovejoy, the uber talented Australian from Gabby Duran. Oh, and stop it, Max. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much. We are so, so excited to have you here. Um, so, to start out, could you tell us a little bit about how you got started as an actor? Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, Got involved first off in in high school, really, like like you guys, but not in a, a, a kind of performing arts high school as such, just a regular old high school. And I was kind of well. I think the first school play I ever did was in like the fifth grade. Wow. It was a show <laughs> called Kids in Paradise. I can't remember the specifics of the plot, but that was the first time I ever did a show at school. And then in high school, I went on to do drama and theatre studies when I was at the end of high school, sort of in, in Australia. Australia, it's what we call like a HSC or VCE, so it's like the final years of high school, 11 and 12. So, and I did drama before that, but I did it as part of my kind of senior years, I suppose. And then I did school productions all through school as well. So that's where I kind of got a, a taste for it. And then at the same time, as you guys would well know, the people at home perhaps don't, but I'm incredibly tall. I'm like six foot seven, six foot eight on a good day. When the, when the wind's blowing the right way. And so I used to play basketball at a really high level. And so it was always a choice for me between those two things. And it was only really after high school I went off to kind of university f first and uh, was doing an arts degree and doing student theatre and started to really feel like it was what I wanted to do. And then eventually I went to a conservatory, like drama school, um, and like studied for three years. And then the rest is, is history. Age-old question: Sports or theater? Yeah, it takes us back to Greek times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I'm sure our viewers would like to know what your creative process is when you get a character. Man, that's a. I mean, it's a great question. It does really depend on 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 what it is, I suppose. Like with our show, you know, and I guess with 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 comedy in general, I would probably say sometimes. It's, you've probably heard it described as like an outside-in sort of uh, situation where maybe like with Principal Swift, I kind of read the sides at the time when the audition came in and I thought that it sounded really um, proper and really kind of British, which it wasn't written that way. And I think even asking the, the creators, uh, they, they had not intended it to be that way. But there was something about it that sounded like that for me. And so I tried doing it in an American accent, just privately at home before I went and auditioned. And I was like, it's kind of weird. And then I did it with an English accent. And I was like, I think this is the way, I think this is what it sounds like. And so that was the, the catalyst for the rest of it. And then the rest of it kind of comes from there. But, you know, it, it, it does depend on the work, whereas I think more with, with, with dramatic stuff, sometimes it's the, the other way around, that it can come with more of the kind of psychological stuff first and you find out how that informs your kind of physical life. But it's really a kind of case-by-case -case basis. And the school uh, that I studied at was not like any particular um, technique or way of working. It really was like a, a pick and choose. We learned a whole lot of different things and you found the different things that kind of worked for you and sort of applied them however you wanted to in a roundabout kind of way. So you would sort of develop your own sort of process from there. Mm. Well, whatever you're doing, it is working really well. If you oh, haven't seen Gabby Duran yet, watch it, just because part. he's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so related to that, what is it like being an adult on a Disney Channel show versus um, a more adult-oriented show? Oh, it's challenging, obviously, <laughs> working <laughs> with uh, really, really difficult teenagers. <laughs> um, so what's the difference? Yeah, or just, yeah, where would that... Uh, yeah, I mean, well, the, well... The, uh, I mean, the big thing is that there's a lot of, uh, which a lot of people don't realise, Max is now very well versed in this, but there's a lot of laws around um, kids working on TV. And so that's the biggest limitation is they can only work a certain amount of hours. And so if Max and I are doing a scene, and you, you know this as well, Claire, but for the people at home, is that, you know, they'll shoot Max's stuff first and then sometimes Max will go off to school or, or he'll rap. And so I'll have to do the scene with you know, a, a stand-in or a, or a piece of tape. So, <laughs> so that can be weird, you know, um, because of course acting really is 
ideally it's an exchange between kind of two people so it's it's a little bit it sort of becomes a little bit technical uh at times and also with our show because there's a lot of kind of there's aliens and special effects and that sort of thing and so there's a technical side to it there but i'd say that's kind of the big difference is is your fellow cast members kind of constantly being, uh, being, being, uh, being removed? I suppose that that really is that really is kind of the biggest thing. Apart from that, everything is the uh, the same. But it's the it's the speed at which we work and the kind of limitations uh, around time that I think makes it different. And then also not having. I mean, Max and and, and Kylie in, in particular, the two older uh, people in the cast are you know really really mature and they all are in their own ways but that's a strange experience as well sometimes if Valerie who's the other adult isn't around for a long time you kind of like Man, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to an adult for a while I mean we've got the wonderful parents Aaron and Brent your parents that are that, that are here today of course give me some uh, give me some adult time but that's sometimes a bit strange you know just kind of um, being the only uh, Feeling like maybe you're the only adult in the room. There's the crew and everyone else, of course, but they're the big differences. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, what's your favorite trait of principal principal <laughs> Um, I mean, probably it, it's and and again, this is something I think that I didn't know at at the start. You kind of figure it out, and it reveals itself as you kind of keep doing it. The thing I sort of like is that he. He's experiencing everything for the first time because even though he's in an adult form, he's never really been on Earth before. And so uh, characters with a lack of self-awareness, you know, whether it's The Office or, or Principal Swift, people that don't realise sort of the way their behaviour is landing with other people or the way they're impacting other people or their environment are really fun to play. And so that's a massive thing for him is that everything's happening to him for the first time, whether that's his relationships with humans or objects like the... The, the drinking stick thing, he, he mistakes a toilet plunger and thinks that it's some sort of vessel for, 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 yeah, for drinking liquid. So that's probably the most interesting thing because there's a real sort of childlike uh, quality that comes with that, which of course is really cool and really fun and really sort of a beautiful thing when someone just doesn't get it, you know? So that's the most interesting thing, I think. So kind of switching gears then, as you know, we in the show want to highlight some organizations that are doing amazing things in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so you're very involved in the Ads Up organization. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So that is, it stands for Australian Diaspora Stands Up, right? So diaspora is kind of like a group of people, like uh, whether it be Australians or Americans, that have kind of like spread out to different parts of the world. Um, so it's the Australian diaspora that's kind of uh, in the United States. And so it's a, in Australia, in much the same way there is here, there's people, people are held in immigration detention that try to come to um, our country without kind of paperwork. And, and most of the time they're coming by boat from places like Indonesia and, and other parts of Asia. And so, uh, you know, the Australian government has a policy that says if you do that, uh, it's always been this way, but it's become more hard line in recent times. If you do that, you, you're not going to reach Australia. We're going to put you on this island in the Pacific, and, and that's where you're going to stay. It used to be that it would, you could still, you could apply for asylum and get refugee status, and you could ultimately make it to Australia. Um, but uh, the government that's in power at the moment has, has implemented a really hard line uh, policy. And so there's been people that have been on these two islands. One is a place called Nauru, which is a country uh, unto itself. And the other one is a place called Manus, which is an island that's part of Papua New Guinea. And so there's been uh, refugees held on those two islands, essentially indefinitely, for sort of six, seven, eight years. Uh, so basically the two governments, the Australian government and the US government, agreed to do a, a refugee swap where a, a small number of people claiming asylum were sent from US detention to Australia and Australia in turn has sent like a, a couple of thousand people here. So there's people being settled in the USA that have been in immigration detention in Australia for you know six or seven years and now they're coming to the USA to sort of start a new life. 
And there's a couple in LA, uh, some friends of mine, Kurosh and Ellie. Hi, guys. And then people all around the, all around the States. Um, and so I just got involved. We were making some regular donations as you try and sort of do to charity. You kind of tick that box. And then... <laughs> Yeah, be exactly, be a good person. And then in the hiatus for the, the show, you know, because we are, and the start date for our second season has been pushed out even more. So we've had this huge amount of time off. You've had to go to school. Uh, I've had to contemplate the meaning of life. Um, but that is kind of what happens when you, you know, because contractually there's a limit to what you can do. And so I started thinking, I mean, I write and do different things, but I was like, I've got to, I mean, this could, I need to find sort of something else to give me a bit of kind of purpose and direction and to sort of try and ground me. And they were looking for volunteers to kind of do more stuff. Um, and so I started out by meeting some people that were here in LA. And then I got more involved uh, in helping people around the country. So I kind of like work the phones a little bit. I have on my computer, I have all these WhatsApp chats with people that have just got here. I make them kind of Amazon lists where we buy them stuff that they need when they arrive. I kind of talk uh, liaise with the resettlement agencies, which are the government agencies that do support them when they get here. So if there's someone who's having like a hard time with one or there's a language barrier, I might try and sort of get, invo get involved and try and help them communicate a little more, N not by necessarily speaking their language, but maybe, you know, I can find someone that can translate, okay. uh, different things like that, um, essentially. And yeah, it's, it's been great. And then also trying to, you know, raise awareness um, wherever I've had a chance to, you know, doing a little bit of press and stuff for the show uh, to talk about it whenever I get a chance to do that and, um, you know, try and get people to kind of contribute where they can. But it's great. It's obviously, you know, a big help to the people that have just got here. But, you know, more than anything, it, it, it has been really good for me to just give me a bit of purpose and direction. And you know what they say, it's better to, to give than to receive. And, and it really does go a long way to allaying some of my, some of the normal sort of anxiety and, and depression that kind of crops up when you, when, you, when you have a lot of time off work. So it's really given me something to kind of focus on that I think is kind of worthwhile and, and important as well. It's incredible.